Uh, hello everybody, this is Tim once again. I just got done watching Halloween uh, Halloween Water, basically. <laughs> Halloween H2O. Uh, the film is directed by Steve Miner, who also directed um, Friday the 13th Part uh, 2 and 3, I believe. Which I enjoy them better than this film. Um, film stars Jamie Lee Curtis back again. Uh, Adam Markin, Michelle Williams. Uh, J Josh Hartnett and LL Cool J. Uh, as for this film, once again, I collect VHS tapes. This, uh, as for this film, you get Josh Hartnett in here, Michelle Williams. Um, this film reeks of Scream. Reeks of it. Reeks of, like, trying to capitalize on the success of Scream at the time. Um, they did the same thing with Bride of Chucky, but in that film, they had a completely different tone for that film. And completely, I mean, well, a completely different style. So, um, I wasn't, uh, as bad, as hard on that one. Um, and I enjoy that film because it has, well, it's a better film than this one. Um, but as for this film, this film is not that good. It's not a bad movie. It's a decent movie. And I'll go ahead and just give my rating. It's a two star film of a possible four. It's not a bad movie. It's better than Halloween 6, the theatrical version of Halloween 6, and it's better than Halloween 5, and it's better than Halloween 3. It's not better than Halloween 1 or 2 or 4 or the producer's cut of Halloween 6. But uh, it's better than the ones I mentioned. Uh, it's not a bad movie. It's just kind of a dull movie with not really a lot going on in it. Uh, it tries to do a repeat kind of the same style of the first movie with like the first two acts and part of the third as being like nothing happening but suspense. But the suspense is so like not and well, it's so underdone in this film and not handled anywhere near as good as it was in the first film because Steve Miner is not as good a director as the John Carpenter. So it comes off just being real dull and boring. This film just is real boring for the first, like, at least two acts. And there's just nothing happening. I feel like I wait forever for a fucking kill after the beginning of the movie. Uh, but <laughs> to jump right into the story here, you got the beginning of the film. This film is uh, Halloween Water, 20 years after the first film. I'll just call it Halloween Water. So here in Halloween Water at the beginning of the film, um, you got uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, of all people, <laughs> who makes an appearance here. But, um... For the beginning of the film, you got the same nurse uh, that was with uh, Dr. Loomis at the beginning of the original film. Uh, going uh, with him when he was going to pick up Michael Myers for transportation to put him in front of a judge. And uh, she's back. She does fine here in her little appearance. Um, she shows up in the movie. Her house has been broken into because she has like the whereabouts of Laurie Strode. <laughs> or where Jamie Lee Curtis has been for the last 20 years. And once, one of the things I hate about this movie is the fact that it ignores continuity of all the other sequels. Now, whether whatever you think about those films, regardless of how good or bad you think they are, that still was effort. There still was effort and uh, time and money spent and put into that. And that they molded the character and uh, grew the character of Michael Myers for those films, regardless of whether you liked how he turned out or not. Uh, they still did that, and that was the franchise. And this film feel it doesn't feel like a Halloween film at all. This feels like a more like a Scream film, really, but with um, but with Michael Myers guest starring on Dawson's Creek. This film has a horrible Dawson's Creek vibe, <laughs> but um, it still winds up being a decent movie in the end, and I'll get to why. <clears throat> but um, starting out with the film, you get the same nurse or whatever uh, from the first film. Her house has been broken into by Michael Myers because she has the whereabouts of Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, Donald Pleasance is dead, so he's not in this film. He's greatly missed. Uh, I missed his character very much in this film. His character would have helped enhance this movie, and I probably would have liked it a lot more if he would have been in it. But uh, So he's dead. He's not in the film at all. They don't even have a character anywhere similar to him. But uh, um, apparently, apparently, he had been living or being watched over by... Uh, by the woman from the first film. She had been his nurse until he passed away. Um, so uh, Michael Myers has broke into the house. He's got the whereabouts of where Jamie Lee Curtis is now. Um, uh, so uh, she goes in her house. She's looking around for trying to figure out, you know, well, what the fuck's going on. Her office has been broken into. She gets uh, Justin Gordon Levitt, the next door boy, to like go in there and search around, see uh, if there's any damage or anything being done. Uh, he steals some beer, comes back out, leaves, goes back to next door, goes back to his house with his buddy he's got with him. Uh, she goes in there, looks around, 
Um, she starts getting spooked. She heads over there to check on Joseph Gordon Levitt. He's got a fucking ice skate rammed in his face, which once again doesn't feel like a Halloween kill at all. It looks kind of silly for a Michael Myers movie. But uh, so he's dead. Then she opens the door, and his Joseph Gordon Levitt's friend is dead. He's been stabbed in the back. And then Michael Myers, poof, the legend makes his entrance. <laughs> So he shows up, Michael Myers is chasing after her, she manages uh, uh, to uh, hold him off for quite a little while, and uh, she had called, uh, the police had been called earlier, and now they showed up, and she's over, they searching her house, but she's over there in Justin Gordon-Levitt's house fighting with Michael Myers, and she's hitting him with a poker, and she does a pretty good job of holding his ass off. If the police had any sense, she would have probably got away. But uh, she holds, she's holding Michael Myers off for a while, but the police can't hear her, and she's screaming out the window trying to get their, uh, trying to get their attention, but... Before they get a chance to go over there, he slits her throat. Um, so she's dead. And then you get them finally realizing that there was something uh, going on over there. And then by the end, Michael Myers just made it outside, though, and drove off in his car. So he's got away once again. Then you get uh, the opening. Well, basically, uh, well, I mean, not the opening because the film's already open. But then you get my favorite part of the film. You get a, a redone voiceover by another actor mimicking Donald Pleasant's voice where he's talking about Michael Myers and how evil he is and stuff. And I really like this. I really enjoyed it. It gives Donald Pleasance a little bit of a presence in the film, but not enough at all. But uh, it's enough to where I enjoy it. Uh, so you get that. I like that. And then you skip. You got Jamie Lee Curtis back in this film. Uh, I appreciate that she came back. That's cool and everything. But... Uh, the fact that she kind of abandoned the franchise and then is now just decided to come back. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm glad she came back. That's good. But this film still isn't that great, regardless of whether she's back or not. That just doesn't automatically make the film good. But it's cool to see her back out of the way. And they play her character up like she's having stress and stuff like that over the incident from when she was a, a teenager. Uh, she has nightmares and stuff about the first movie. Uh, coincidentally, she doesn't really have any nightmares about the second movie. Which this film is supposed to be a direct sequel to one and two, but the Michael Myers' hands aren't aren't burnt, and uh, he's uh, it just doesn't really reference the second movie a lot as it does much as the first one. So it kind of seems like it ignores the second one too in a way. So the continuity is more fucked up here than uh, than <laughs> than than I would than I would want it to be, but um. Uh, yeah, the fucked up continuity, I can't stand that. And I don't like the fact that this is a sellout film. It is. This is a sellout film. They sold Michael Myers out to the Scream audience and to make him more... It's like the other films were made were made more for the fans. But um, the fans uh, didn't come to see him enough. And Halloween 5 and 6 both tanked at the box office. Uh, so um, they kind of wanted to reaccess Michael Myers and take him back out of the closet. Probably since... Uh, I don't know if Brad Chucky came out before this and it had been a hit, but uh, I figure it was probably because of that, or or I think Brad Chucky might have came out, came out around the same time, I don't know if it's made before though or not, but they kind of want to do the same thing with Michael Myers, bring him back into now the 90s and revamp him and turn him into Meta Myers <laughs> for the new Scream age. So that's what they basically do with the character here, So and the film doesn't even feel like a Halloween film, like the setting, it doesn't feel like Halloween at all, um, so you don't get that vibe whatsoever. So this film is surely lacking in that department. So basically you got a sellout Michael Myers film that only winds up being decent. It is a sellout film and it is, that is disrespectful for the character and for the franchise. But the film still winds up being decent. And once again, I'll get to why. <laughs> but uh, you got Jamie Lee Curtis. Her son is played by Josh Hartnett. Josh Hartnett as an actor, he's okay. I've seen movies I've liked him in like 30 Days a Night. And uh, one or two others. She's okay here. I don't, I don't hate him. But Josh Hartnett's never been a great actor. I wouldn't even say that he's a, a really good actor. I would say that he's just a decent to good actor. But uh, he's passable. He, he does okay. He's not anything to write home about or nothing. Uh, he plays the typical rebellious son who uh, just... His mom doesn't want to let him do anything that might get him out of her sight. So he... He's like, uh, he's just wanting to get away from his mom and wanting to do his own thing. So it's like typical teenage rebellion shit. But, uh, Josh Hartnett, he's okay. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is, she's fine. Jamie Lee Curtis is fine. Acting-wise, she's fine. Um, so, uh, so she's now, like, working at a head mistress, head, she's the head mistress at, like, a fucking big, expensive-looking look, prep school, I believe. And I'm like, well, damn, she's doing pretty good for herself. 
But uh, so she's the headmistress there. Her son goes there. Um, uh, Josh Hartnett's going out with Michelle Williams in this film, and I believe she was in Dawson's Creek, which gives this film even more of a Dawson's Creek vibe, which I don't like at all. I fucking hate Dawson's Creek. I don't give a shit about Dawson's Creek. But anyway, so uh, he's going out with Michelle Williams. They got two friends, some boy and some girl. They're just there for cannon fodder for for deaths. They don't really amount to shit. Their characters are useless. I think the guy's name is Jimmy. I don't remember the, the, his girlfriend's name, but it doesn't really matter. They're just there to die. They're completely useless. But anyway, so you got those two, and right out the cast, you got Adam Arkin, I believe is the actor's name, who plays uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's boyfriend in the movie. And then you got fucking LL Cool J. <laughs> what the fuck is LL Cool J doing in this movie? He's here for no reason other than name recognition. He does nothing in this movie. Nothing. He doesn't do shit. He's like the comic relief guy is all he is, and his jokes aren't really anything hilarious. He's talking to his girlfriend on the phone about uh, wanting to be a writer all the time, and he's like writing like a fucking romantic, uh, sensual stories or something like that. He talks about round melon breasts and shit, and I'm like, okay, whatever. He's not needed here. Michael Myers has like 20 chances to kill him and doesn't for some reason, I guess, because he's LL Cool J. <laughs> but anyway... He's a security guard there at the school. <clears throat> One thing leads to another. Like I said, they try to play up the suspense thing here, and not a lot happens at all for the first two, two and a half acts, just like the first film. But the suspense isn't here to keep it interesting. You get uh, Michael Myers like at a fucking rest stop where his vehicle is broke down, and he uh, steals this woman's car, which is pretty creepy, and she's in the stall, and she's like, her kid is in the, in the next stall next to her. Using the bathroom, and she's sitting there waiting on her to get done. And she's fucking, he, Michael Myers just walks by, like, nabs her purse, like, directly away from her. And it's kind of like a nice, nice little jump. And she starts peeking through the door, and he's standing there. And she can see him standing there with his mask on. It looks kind of creepy, actually. It's like, I'll give the movie that. It's got one, one, uh, semi tense little scene here. Uh, so he leaves, and her daughter starts screaming. And of course, we know nothing bad has happened to her because they're not going to let Michael Myers kill a kid, even though they came pretty close with Jamie in four and five. <laughs> But, uh, so, um, uh, he steals their car after he takes her purse and takes her keys, but they're all right, though. They just don't have a car. <laughs> but what a, what a dickhead, though. He steals their mode of transportation. <laughs> Buying a new vehicle ain't easy. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, he steals their car. He's heading to, uh, Yosemite, I believe is the name of the place. You got Janet Lee in this movie playing, uh, fucking Jamie Lee Curtis's, like, friend at when she works there and of course she is Jamie Lee Curtis's mom so you get goofy shit where she looks at Jamie Lee Curtis and she's like can I be maternal for a minute and I'm like oh fuck. wink wink we get it you're going for the scream audience we get it wink wink it's like uh it's like the movie goes like movies like these go out of their way to like throw hard like the, the hard trivia stuff and like how to survive horror movies and stuff like that shit all worked in Scream because that was the complete basis for those movies. But here in Halloween, it just feels thrown in just for like the Scream audience. Just thrown in. Just like, wink, wink, did you get that Scream audience? Michael Myers is hip. He's hip. He's fucking hip, I tell you. <laughs> He's not just the old school slasher. He's up to date. <laughs> you got scenes where like, uh, fucking... Uh, Josh Hartnett's talking to his friends, and his friend makes a joke like, you and your mom, you know, you're going to be living with her forever. You'll probably wind up running some motel out in the middle of nowhere. Wait, you get it? You get it? Wink, wink. Psycho, you're so fucking clever. <laughs> I'm like, come on. Uh, too much. And then when Janet Lee like, drives away after she's done talking to Jamie Lee Curtis, like, trying to comfort her because Jamie Lee Curtis is so tense because it's Halloween. Even though it doesn't look shit like Halloween. She drives away. You get to hear the psycho theme. I barely noticed it when I heard it. But other people told me about it. So I noticed it more. And it's not too big a deal for me. But the fact that it's another wink wink to scream audience type people. Who are trying to like pick up on meta shit. And little horror trivia things thrown in. I'm like fucking enough. But uh. Michael Myers finally shows up there. Through the first uh, two acts and a half of the movie. You just get Laurie Strode hallucinating Michael Myers. It works well for the first second act because uh, it's built up and you get to see her character and her mental state. But it gets annoying after a while and she just keeps hallucinating and it turns out it's not Michael Myers and it gets predictable and you know it's not him. So I'm like, enough with the fucking hallucinations. But uh, Michael Myers shows up there at the, uh, the fucking gate of the school. Uh, he's wanting in. Basically, 
Uh, LL Cool J walks up there, opens up the gate. Michael Myers sneaks in by him. For some reason, he doesn't kill LL Cool J. I don't know why. He has a ch chance right here to kill him easy. But instead, he just fucking just disappears and just leaves LL Cool J alive. But uh, Laurie Strode decides that uh, well, all the kids at the school, they go camping. Because uh, they're going out for some kind of big camping trip or something like that they're having this year. Josh Hartnett wanted to go, but then uh, he decides that he wants to stay behind with Michelle Williams and their two buddies. Um, but uh, Jamie Lee Curtis decides to change her mind and lets him go so she can give him more freedom and try to lighten up because it has been 20 years. Apparently, though, she shouldn't have lined up because she had the right idea about keeping him safe, apparently. But um, she he he's supposed to go. She writes his, signs his permission slip, but he doesn't go. He decides to stay anyway, so he can be there with Michelle Williams and I guess hopefully get laid. <laughs> but uh, so uh, he's turning 17, so it's kind of like a semi uh, anniversary because uh, she was 17 when uh, Michael Myers attacked her in the first movie. So he's 17 now, so he's like he's coming back. Uh, I, I think I think the movie's trying to say he's coming back because it's like the anniversary and her son is 17 now. Maybe it's trying to say that or uh, or I don't know, but uh. I mean, I'm not for sure. I guess it is. But, um, so uh, Michael Myers makes it in there. <laughs> They're eating and everything. You get more Michael Myers hallucinations from Jamie Lee Curtis. Boring as fuck. I'm tired of this shit. Um, you get fucking, um, the Jimmy guy. He decides to go out and go on his own and get some shit or something like that. And he's got his, uh, a corkscrew, I believe, down in the, uh, the sink. And he's fucking sticking his hand down in there. To get it out, Michael Myers pops up behind him and he just turns around, boom, jump scares Michael Myers. Michael Myers' is fucking mask looks horrible in the shot. It's like CGI looking. It looks like, well, it is CGI and it looks like shit. It looks like fucking dog shit. But uh, <laughs> then you don't even get to see what happens to Jimmy. I mean, you finally get a kill after like <sighs> forever and you don't even see it. You don't even get to see it. So I'm like, what the fuck? Fuck you, movie. At this point, I'm almost hating the movie. <clears throat> but um after that um <clears throat> sorry once uh well sorry my fucking sickness is trying to come back on me i thought i was rid of my allergies but the fucking seasons get ready to start changing it's hard for my my allergies to go away but anyway back to the movie here so uh jimmy's girlfriend goes to look for him find out where he's at uh she finds his body she climbs into like a dumb waiter because michael myers is coming after her. uh she Michael Myers cuts the fucking cord, like the, the rope that the dumb waiter's attached to, and it falls down, and she's made it out on the other side, and it smacks straight down on her leg, and fucking, you're like, oh shit, and it's like, almost ripped her leg completely off, and that I thought was kind of, that I liked, that I liked, I thought that was a good scene, because her leg's like, almost completely hanging off, and barely hanging on there, then Michael Myers shows up, and puts his foot on her neck, and fucking like, brutally stabs her, like, psycho stabbing style, um, which I thought was okay, um, Shows that he ain't fucking around. Then Josh Hart and Michelle Williams, they find the they find her body like hung up. Uh, she's well, she's hung. Her, her corpse is, and then Michael Myers pops up, and they decide to get the fuck out of there. Um, they take off running. Oh, uh, before I forget, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis fucking has become suspicious because she realizes that her son is seventeen now. So she, I guess that automatically means that she thinks Michael Myers is gonna appear. <laughs> She becomes suspicious. She's packing a piece. Her and Adam Arkin and LL Cool J are going around looking to try to see if they can find uh, who was driving the suspicious car at the ve uh, suspicious vehicle at the gate. Well, of course, she knows it's Michael Myers or believes it is. She goes out looking for him. Her and Adam, her and Adam Arkin do, and LL Cool J he splits up with him and goes out on his own. But uh, so uh, he's chased after Josh Hartnett and Michelle Williams. Uh, they get into a struggle. Michelle Williams knocks him out with a rock. He stabs Josh Hartnett in the leg. He chases after him. They get behind a little gate, just like a little tiny gate that doesn't, looks like uh, looks like I could break through it, honestly. But they drop these keys, and Michael Myers can't get in. He's got his knife sticking like straight through the gate, trying to swing at him and slit their throats like that. And uh, it's pretty entertaining, but it's kind of silly that Michael Myers can't just get through this little gate after in the last movie he fucking knocked down a whole set of bars with a human body. So I'm thinking, why can't he just get through a little gate? But he actually picks up the keys and starts trying to open the gate. And I'm thinking, what? I just, 
I just don't understand why he couldn't just rip it off or just bust through it. Whatever. He, <laughs> he finally manages to get through it, but Jamie Lee Curtis is on the other side, and she lets Josh Hart and Michelle Williams in, saves them, and then you get the face-off scene where they're looking at each other through a little window. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit, tense, actually. Well, all joking aside, I actually did enjoy that little confrontation, now that look they give each other through that little uh, window. But uh, <laughs> after that, um, she fucking gets uh, Josh Hartnett and Michelle Williams to hide. Adam Arkin and uh, Jamie Lee Curtis are looking around, trying to find Michael Myers. Adam Arkin sees a shadow that looks identical to Michael Myers. But Adam Arkin grabs the gun and shoots first and asks questions later. <laughs> uh, he fucking shoots. And turns out it's LL Cool J and they think they've killed him, which he should have died here. I don't know why they he survives in this movie. He has no reason to. But uh, I like it, though, how... <laughs> Michael Myers, the shadow, morphs into LL Cool J. <laughs> That's so stupid. But, uh, so you think LL Cool J's dead. Uh, then the real Michael Myers shows up, stabs Adam Arkin, and lifts him up in the air, and he's fucking twitching and everything like the girl from Halloween 2, similar to her, the nurse that Michael Myers killed in that one. So that's a decent death. That's the one throwback that I see in this movie to Halloween 2. Uh, so Adam Arkin's dead. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis takes off. Uh, you get a funny scene where there's blood smeared on the door, and Michael Myers thinks that she's in there. He starts busting through the door trying to get to her, and she comes up behind him, knocks the fuck out of him with a, a object. Um, he gets up, starts coming after her and uh, Michelle Williams and Josh Hartnett, and they manage to make it outside, get in the vehicle, and Michael Myers tries to get them, but they get away in time, so they can just leave here. But Jamie Lee Curtis, this whole movie has the theme of like her facing her fears and uh, <laughs> facing down her monster, and you know, killing it. Or at least trying to, or die trying. So instead of just leaving and having to worry about him coming back some other random Halloween, she decides to face him down, and say "fuck this shit, this what's on." And this is when the movie, this is when the movie turns good right here. Uh, <clears throat> when it gets to the point where she's facing at him one on one, this is when the Halloween feel comes back into this film, and the Dawson's Creek feel is gone, and the scream feel is gone. This is when it becomes a, a Halloween film. But, uh, so she decides to go back in there, she gets an axe, she fucking kicks the glass open and grabs the axe, it's like, badass. <laughs> she comes in there, she's gonna fucking take out Michael Myers or die trying. She gets in there, and Michael Myers does like a one-arm handbar lift and comes down behind her, and he thinks he's got the drop arms, turns around and fucking hacks him right in the chest with an axe. Pretty entertaining, <laughs> but he slices her, of course, the little pussy axe ain't enough to take down Michael Myers. Uh, you get a cool scene here where she's underneath all these tables in this big room. There's like whole lines of tables, and she's underneath them. And he's standing on top of one. I get the idea though that she could just like raised up and somehow like flipped the table over and lunged him back or something. But I don't know. Maybe she's not strong enough to do that or something. But I don't know. I just thought that would have been an interesting way to do it. But she doesn't do that, and she just uh, she takes off going under the tables, and he's like walking on them trying to follow her. She manages to get out, and uh, she fucking uh, stabs him with a flag, uh, hits him with it, and then stabs him with it, knocks him down. Of course, he ain't dead. I could tell, like I say, this final right here with this uh, big uh, duel between the two that remind that actually makes the film feel like a Halloween film is where the film really picks up and becomes fun. She takes off. Michael Myers coming after. They go into the kitchen. She takes like multiple butcher knives and fucking slinging them every single one at him and missing the. She misses like every single time though. And uh, she, uh, he goes to stab her with his butcher knife. She uh, pulls up this piece of wood and he stabs through it and then she knees him in the nuts. I'm like Michael Myers gives a look like. Oh, you didn't <laughs> uh, with his eyes so then uh, he fucking knocks her down and she gets up he, he's got a funny scene here with Michael Myers he's got his knife stuck in the thing he's like wiggling it like that the piece of wood and, like he doesn't know what to do he's like what, what, what the fuck got her <laughs> so slings it off finally I thought that was funny and uh, so he chases off that he's still chasing after her and uh, Michael, she, Michael Myers gets his ass kicked at this final I mean Jamie Lee Curtis whoops his ass but uh, he's standing there <clears throat> he's a uh, thing he's gonna get the drop on her again, I believe. She fucking just leaps out of nowhere where she's been hid behind this curtain and just starts stabbing multiple times. Fucking bam, 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 and he falls backwards off this off the balcony and lands on one of those tables. And you're like, hell yeah, she's fucking owned. <laughs> She gets down there, she gets ready to finish him off, and LL Cool J surprises her and stops her, and he's like, he's dead, he's dead, and like, I just want to blow LL Cool J's brains out right there myself for saying that. I know that that's purposely in there, because the audience knows that he's obviously not dead, and Halloween fans know after six movies that he's not fucking dead, but, uh, so they, uh, they, uh, LL Cool J takes her out of there, the police are there, uh, Josh Hart and Michelle Williams are there, they're fine, and, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis knows that he's not dead, and they got him in the back of a 
stopped vehicle and the coroner bag. She knows he's not dead. She fucking hijacks the vehicle. I love this. She hijacks the vehicle. Fucking uh, takes off driving with it. He's in the back of it. He wakes up. He's surprised to see her. She slings him out the window. Fucking rams straight into him. Drives him down the mountain. And uh, she flies out of the vehicle. And the vehicle wrecks. And uh, Michael Myers gets flung out. And he gets hit. And he hits a tree. And the vehicle uh, f- uh, swings and fucking hits him straight in the back. And pins him to the in between the tree and the vehicle. And I'm like, damn. I thought it was a pretty cool action scene right there. This film is ruined by Hall- Halloween Resurrection. Um. <clears throat> this film ends the series regardless it ends the it ends the character of Michael Myers at least this is it ends it if, if, uh, if you if the death of Michael Myers in part two with him blowing up with Dr. Loomis wasn't cool enough I mean if that one was a, I think that one was my favorite death for Michael Myers honestly that's an epic way for the character to go out but if you if you want to make a sequel and you can't let him go out this that way uh, this is the best way him the uh, this is the way he dies here is the best way. This film is ruined by Halloween Resurrection. The entire I, the entire idea of this movie of Laurie facing down her demons and conquering them is completely just useless. It's completely useless when you bring in Halloween Resurrection. There's no reason for it. It's just destroyed. It's totally fucking worthless. <laughs> and if you, after you bring in Halloween Resurrection, it just com- defeats the entire purpose and idea of this movie. Because all through the movie, they like got little hints that she needs to face down her demons and and conquer them and go one on one with them and stop being a little pussy and being afraid. And so she finally does that. He's pinned at the tree. You get a little emotional moment where he's like wanting her to help him. And uh, she ain't falling for that shit because she knows he's full shit. She fucking swings the axe and chops his head off. So she's like, fuck you, bro. <laughs> so she chops off Michael Myers' head and she's like standing there like badass with the axe and it's like, bam, movie over. But <laughs> this whole film is just. This is where the franchise should end. Uh, I don't hate, like I said, as far as the sequels go, Halloween 2 is where it should have ended, but the fact that you've got sequels anyway, Halloween 4 is good, Halloween 3 doesn't even count, Halloween 4 is good, Halloween 5 sucks, Halloween 6, the, uh, fucking theatrical cut, is just barely passable, uh, the producer's cut is great, but, uh, that still wasn't a proper end, I don't think, for the, for, for the producer's cut. Or for the theatrical cut for Michael Myers. But for this film with Laurie Strode chopping his fucking head off like a badass. That is a proper ending for the character. There's no reason for a sequel to this. If you didn't end it with two, you should end it here. There's no reason for a sequel to this movie. There's no reason to bring this character back. There was no way to bring this character back. The way that they bring him back in the next movie is a complete cheat. And a complete spit in the face to anybody that worked on this film. And anybody that put heart and thought into this film. Um, And it's a complete spit in the face to the fans who finally got what they deserved after watching this character for so long with this ending. My opinion, don't watch any film after this one. If you have watched the sequels, stop here. Stop here. Done with it. End of franchise. Over. No reason to watch anything else. Part 2 was the end of the Michael Myers and fucking um, Donald Pleasant's uh, Sam Loomis story. And that was the end of that. And it could be the end of the trio with Laurie Strode too, with all three of those characters. But since they made sequels anyway, uh, and you got Halloween H2O, you can consider this the end of the Laurie Strode story and the end of the Michael Myers story. So, yeah, this film ends the character on a high note because of the, the final of this movie is what raises it up to a decent two stars and makes it fun. And uh, all the scream stuff and scream jokes and shit like that is what plagues this movie and the Dawson's Creek vibe is what sucks the soul out of it. That and the fact it feels like a sellout film. But once you get to the ending here, it's like this is the reward right here. This is the reward. The final. The final fight to duke it out with Jamie Lee Curtis and Michael Myers. This is the payoff after all the Dawson's Creek bullshit and all that suffering with that shit. This is the payoff. And it ends good. It's a good payoff. She fucking lops his head off. This is a two-star film. Like I've said, this is a sellout film. I don't hate it, but it is a sellout film. It's better than Halloween 6, the theatrical cut, and Halloween 5, any cut, <laughs> and Halloween 3. Uh, it's uh, it's not better than Halloween 4, or 1, or 2, or the producer's cut of 6. But still a decent film, and I, I semi-enjoy it. I can I mean, I can get enjoyment out of it because of just because of the final. As a matter of fact, if you cut just like half the stuff out of this movie and just kept a little bit of it, and then added on the final, I would enjoy this movie much more. <laughs> But uh, Halloween Resurrection, I never watch. When I have a marathon of these films, I stop watching them after this one, honestly. And I'm only going to watch Halloween Resurrection just to do a review of it. It has no reason to exist at all. 
Um, so, like I said, if you want a continuation of the Laurie Strode story and kind of a more proper ending for her character, or a better ending for her character than what you kind of got in Halloween 2, uh, then this is the film. And if you've watched all the sequels, definitely watch this one for tr the true ending of Michael Myers, uh, which was in the second film, but because they keep going with the character, uh, this is the best ending way. This is the best way they could end the character after all the sequels, and this is the way that he should end with this final duke out with Jamie Lee Curtis and her conquering her demon, so to speak. And for me, this is where the franchise ends. This is it. It's over. There's the se no sequel after this I'd give a shit about. There's no reason for it to exist other than money because this film was a hit. And that's the only reason it was made. That's it. I don't count films like that, honestly. Films that are just made for money and don't even continue. And just like, well, don't really continue the story and just betray everything established in other films. Well, this film does that too, but it makes up for it with the final slightly. So I can almost, I can come close to letting it slide more because of the final but uh i mean if you want to you can consider this in the same universe as all the other films you could squeeze it in you can i mean it won't i know some people say you can't but it's a horror film i mean they're all about imagination and it's a movie so it's there's room for ad stuff and shit like that if you want to you can squeeze it in with all the other films you can uh the only, one of the other weak things for this film is donald pleasance isn't in it and i hate that and i really miss him he would have made this film much more enjoyable but uh, you can squeeze it into continuity with other films if you want to. I mean, it, it's possible. You can do it. But, uh, I mean, I actually like to do that and prefer to do that. I don't like thinking of this film as, like, just f throwing everything else away because that's really disrespectful, uh, regardless of how good the ending final is. But um, the ending final of this film raises it up to a decent two-star film. It's not horrible, but it's not anything great either. Uh, it's just a decent film. Uh, but yeah, the, the movie should have ended it too, but if they had to end at another spot, they should end here. Uh, they do end here, as far as I'm concerned. And the character of Michael Myers ends here, and the character of Laura Strode ends here, as far as I'm concerned. Um, this franchise is over for me, We're here. The next film, to me, is just a film, just there. But, um, I'll see you guys again with the final review for the original franchise with Halloween Resurrection. And, uh, like I've said, this is a decent film. And if you are a big Jamie Lee Curtis fan, I'd say you, you should check this out more. Um, i say you should check this film out if you're a big Jamie Lee Curtis fan. And if you're a Halloween fan, i still say check this film out regardless of how uh, good or bad it is. Because it's still fun to see Jamie Lee Curtis fighting Michael Myers one last time. The true one last time. Uh, so I'll see you guys again with the, the final uh, uh, Halloween. Well, not the final Halloween movie review, but the final review for the for the original franchise. So I'll see you guys again with the Halloween Resurrection Review.